So one of the things I like about this new kind of video diary style format I'm trying out is it means I get a chance to see questions and suggestions about what it is I'm building sort of while I'm still in the middle of doing it. And I've already had some great comments on the videos I've put up already and I thought I'd take a little bit of time to actually kind of address those now. Um, in software development there's a technique called rubber duck debugging and this is a, a concept whereby like if you're trying to write a block of code and you can't get it to work and you can't figure out what's going wrong, you're staring at it for hours. The idea is that you have a physical rubber ducky, like you take in the bath, and um, when you get stuck, you kind of explain to the rubber duck what it is you're trying to do and why you've written the lines of code you had. And just that process of kind of talking out loud and trying to sort of say what you've done often helps you realize any mistakes you've made or sort of you know better ways you could have done things as well so that's what i'm kind of hoping to do here by um answering the questions and the comments that have come in by covering things that maybe i didn't explain very well the last time i didn't mention i'm actually hoping that that will help me um you know fix those problems or come up with better solutions so um I'm not going to mention any names, anyone that, that did kind of uh, comment, thank you very much, um, because actually you're helping me, um, and this is a video for my benefit, I'm just going to hopefully come up with better ways of doing things as a result of addressing some of those uh, questions. So, uh, the first question I had, or the first comment, was about the serial interface I mentioned in the last video. So, I had a problem that I'm using an ESP32 here, to control these displays, but I'm using uh, some Arduino boards here, and to make them interface, I'm using a serial connection between the ESP and the Arduino. And the question was, well, hang on a minute, if I can get a serial interface to work between the ESP and the Arduino here, why don't I just use a serial interface between the ESP and all the Arduino boards? That's a great question. So, um, and this is complicated because I've got lots of different sorts of uh, interfaces going on here now. I've got SPI connections which are going to uh, some of the displays. I've got an I squared C connection to the seven digit display and I've got a serial connection to the Arduino. The main point about them is I squared C and SPI are what we call um, buses. So it's a bit like um, a Wi-Fi network. You can have lots of different devices all join the bus and so long as they have a unique uh, address so in the case of um, an SPI bus, each individual device is, is addressed by pulling a, a signal line low. In the case of an I2C bus, uh, every device has an address. And on a PJON bus as well, we have an address. So you can have lots and lots of different devices and they can all share the same network. Uh, a serial connection though, that is only between two devices. So it's not a bus. You literally have a, a transmit and a receive line which I've got on uh, my ESP and I've got, I connect the transmit of the ESP to the receive of the Arduino and the transmit of the Arduino to the receive of the ESP and it's like a direct connection between the two. So uh, that's why I can't use a serial interface to connect from the ESP to all of the devices. It can only go between two devices. So that was the, the first question about that. Um, I had another question about the serial connection as well, which was, um, Am I using a software serial interface on the Arduino or the hardware interface? Now, um, the answer is I'm using a hardware interface. So most Arduino devices, certainly Unos and Nanos, only have a single serial interface. There's something called a UART interface as well. And uh, that is what is used when you program it. So when you uh, plug in a USB cable and you upload code to it, or if you have the serial monitor active, it's used to send information to that as well. But you can also use that same serial output to send to other devices, which is what I'm doing here to the ESP. The problem is, if you do that, that means that you then can't have the serial monitor active or you can't upload code at the same time. So I'm using pins zero and one on the Arduino, which are the hardware UART pins. You'll often find that they don't get used in a lot of example Arduino sketches because it does make it slightly more tricky. Well, you can't use a serial monitor. And when you want to upload any new code to the board, what you'll have to do is unconnect those pins again. But it does mean that I get uh, a reliable, fast 
serial connection between the two devices um, because I'm using the, the dedicated hardware to do it. I could have used a, an emulated software serial link instead on another pair of pins, um, but if you do that you tend to have to run a much slower board rate because you're actually using the processor to, to emulate the, the serial connection there. So I hope that answers that question a bit. However, the answer to that question may become obsolete quite shortly anyway because I had another very helpful comment which uh, tried to address my, my woes of the level shifting between the ESP and the Arduinos and it said okay I mentioned I tried a logic level converter it didn't work and uh, I considered you know changing these to, to Wemos boards and that didn't work and they said why don't uh, I use a diode based uh, conversion instead and I misunderstood what they meant to start with. I mean, diodes, you know, only let current pass in a certain direction. Um, but they also drop a bit of voltage across a diode. Now, it depends on the style of diode. It's normally around 0.7 volts or something like that. And what I thought they meant was, could I use the diode, the voltage drop across the diode to step down the 5 volt to uh, 3 volts, 3.3 uh, volts? And I kind of, I looked at it and I kind of went, well, that's not going to work because I, I need this to be a bi-directional link. I need it to uh, go the other way to step up from 3.3 to 5 volts as well. This is, keeps falling off because I just put some rubbish tape on there. But that's not what they meant. What they meant is, can I create a resistor divider between the 5 and the 3.3 volts and then use a diode to allow uh, the current from the 3.3 up to the 5 not to go through the resistor? And that's a brilliant solution. Um, so I'm very, very thankful. Uh, you know who you are who suggested that. That was a that was a fantastic suggestion. So all what I've just said about the serial link between the uh, the ESP and the Arduino. I mean that's still valid, but I suspect I'm going to end up uh, getting rid of that Arduino again anyway, and directly connecting the ESP to the bus network with the Arduino, which is what I wanted to do anyway. So. Um, yeah, you probably don't need to worry about the serial link. I really should have stuck these on better before I started doing this. Okay. Um, I also had, what else did I, oh, I had some questions about keep talking and nobody explodes as well, which you may be familiar with. So that's a video game um, on the PC and I think on other devices as well. And it wasn't really ever my intention to create a physical version of keep talking and nobody explodes. That's not what I was, that's not what I set out to do. I set out to create an escape room in a box. But the nature of it being largely digital based puzzles and having a timer countdown and, and what I said about it being modular, I guess, has kind of triggered that thought in people's heads. And now it's triggered it thought in my head as well. And I can't decide how much in that direction I want to go or not. People have in the past, uh, other people have created various kind of physical versions of that game using Arduinos and, and other microprocessors. I don't, I'm not aware of anyone that's actually created a full-on replication of it. I think people tend to, to reproduce the individual models. Um, that wasn't necessarily where I was going to go, but I might, I would certainly borrow some ideas, I think, from Keep Talking Nobody Explains, because I think it's got some great ideas. Um, and it's one of these games that plays with the idea of deliberate complexity. Um, so there's a random element for one thing, so every time you play it it's different and that is one thing that I definitely like to, to borrow ideas from I think. And also there's this idea of, um, like I say, coordination and communication puzzles that are made deliberately hard by including techno babble and instructions that are hard to relay and things like that. So I might be borrowing some ideas of that. And um, in fact, on that note, I've started to upgrade my, so my simple slave modules, the ones that keep on falling off here on this poorly applied bit of sticky back plastic. Uh, I've started to upgrade these into um, uh, sort of more exciting devices as well. So here I've just got like a multiple choice question thing. This is going to fire a new question every uh, 30 seconds or something that players will need to um, submit the correct answer to. And if they don't do it in time, that will cause, um, uh, you know, a, a failure, a strike or whatever you want to call it on the, on the master board here as well. So that's kind of um, uh, something else I'm, I'm playing at the moment. Oh, the final thing, uh, and a comment I should have addressed, uh, somebody very rightly pointed out when I created the, um, 
the panels here on my laser cutter, I wasn't wearing safety glasses. And that's, they're absolutely right to point that out. And that's my bad. I shouldn't have done that. So in my defense, what you saw me on the video was that I was moving the laser uh, with its focusing point. So that's when it's only at 1% power. I was moving it to the bottom left hand corner of the image so that I could trace the, the outline here and fit on my A5 sheet. So there wasn't at that point, and I wasn't looking directly at the beam either, but that's no excuse. I hold my hands up. Um, you know, I, I try to create these videos I, I wouldn't by any means say that I set best practice, but I should have done that. So um, if you are using laser cutters of any device, um, you should always wear appropriate safety glasses and ensure you know other safety precautions as well. Um, thank you for pointing that out. Yeah, I will do that in the future, um, my mistake. Anywho, so uh, that's a bit of an update of where we're up to so far. I am now going to implement this wonderful idea that means I can directly interface the ESP onto the 5 volt bus with the nanos and then once I've done that I can start looking at more actual um, kind of puzzle types and I think maybe I might treat myself to some um, better sticky tape as well so that these don't keep on falling off the board here um, and I shall post the next update when I've done that. Alright cheers! <laughs>